just take a look at hands. How many of you are actually starting a company or founder of a startup or wearable, a wearable product? Wearable products meaning actual devices, consumer devices, right? And how many of you are working on um, you know, IoT related functions like software or infrastructure type of thing? Cool, okay. All right, so um, the topic I was, give, I was uh, given is uh, to talk about the trends in IoT, uh, wearable IoT, which is by itself is a very big topic. Uh, needless to say, the reason why, why we are sitting here is that we all know this. You know, IoT is, uh, has exploded in the last few years. Um, there are lots of um, uh, innovations in IoT in the wearable devices, and uh, it's projected to be a huge uh, value, a huge market. I have no idea what trillion is. Somebody uh, asked me the question of how many times do you need to count one million dollar, you know, dollar by dollar, you know, one, two, three, and I think somebody said it's three days. I have no idea how, how, how many days you need to count one trillion. But anyway, I, I guess it depends on whether you are British or you are American, the trillion range from a large number of zeros, but uh, it's huge. <laughs> And I also read somewhere that the, uh, the China IoT market is going to be used as well uh, by 2022. I think at this part in Hong Kong, we all know that uh, uh, China, by from the, either from the government or the market, is also driving uh, very strongly in IoT. Uh, the term IoT is slightly, slightly different in China than probably in the US, uh, where in the US we all, always refer to wearable IoT as uh, consumer devices, but in China, IoT a lot of time it's referring to large in infrastructures such as smart cities and uh, transportation and all that. But nevertheless, it's inclusive. This diagram, don't try to even read it. It's just one little, you know, uh, emphasizes that uh, at all walks of life and all categories of uh, products, uh, you're going to be involved in some sort of connect. They, they all will be connected. And and all these connected devices and uh, are loosely called IoT. But today, we will want to, uh, at least in my talk, I would uh, just want to focus on the wearables, uh, as we say. So, um, so, uh, but um, to narrow the areas from my previous, from the previous slides, we look at these few categories, right? And we think that the driver, the energy of the industry is is really concentrated in the in in, in these few areas. Uh, very well need us to say uh, many of us already wear a smartwatch uh, or or a wristband or wristband measuring our activities um, and uh, transportation like uh, uh, automatic uh, you know anonymous cars driving and also things related to connecting the uh, car or the automobile to the internet. Um, I. Um, talk to a lot of uh, a few startups that have very interesting uh, projects that they're doing, including one person that one startup that is focused on um, preventing fatigue driving. So every year, a lot of people that a lot of traffic accidents is caused by fatigue driving. Truck drivers they drive long hours and somehow crash into something. <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of innovations in there. It's not just. Uh, autonomous driving, but a lot of the innovations related to cars. Uh, IIoT, industrial IoT, is also one of the biggest topics, uh, but probably we won't talk about that today because we want to look at wearables. And again, don't look at the numbers, just look at the trend, right? So on the wearable forecast, it's going to be, it will keep go up, go, going up, which is uh, we, the reason why we're here. Um, Needless to say, so um, uh, a couple of years, I lived in Beijing for many years and I just uh, started, uh, uh, moved to Hong Kong and a um, couple of years later, a couple of years before, uh, 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 when I lived in mainland China, everybody was uh, trying to get a wristband and uh, there were many people carrying wristbands. And then there were a lot of people, a lot of startups are uh, focusing on you know, creating what they call um, intelligent hardware or smart hardware. And some, for, for somehow, uh, from the consumer from in the marketplace, somehow it didn't create a lot of wave, right? People don't see a lot of um, you know, new devices coming up. But 
I think uh, recently this year, at least this year or the latest part of last year, we are starting to see a lot of the innovations are uh, coming out. Uh, some innovations may not be in form factor. For example, wristbands, uh, the, the consumer is actually demanding a uh, uh, not just a cheap or uh, low-cost band, but uh, accuracy as well. Um, so they're starting to, to, to demand a lot more in terms of uh, the applications, the features, uh, capability of measuring accurately. Um, so those are really increasing. The, the consumer is really aware, increasing the awareness of uh, 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 of wearable devices. And just one more slide to show the in, from the investor's point of view, um, from the fundraising point of view, uh, wearables. Uh, projects in wearable has been raising uh, a lot more money on a per project basis, a lot more amount in a per project basis in crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, at least in, in 2015, and this year I don't have the data yet, but I got this data from a very source. Um, so we're seeing that um, uh, investment, ma investment money are shifting from uh, mobile apps to, uh, to wearable devices. And um, that's not surprising at all, because uh, actually uh, a lot of these wearable IoT devices are uh, apps very good, rich feature apps and and and, uh, and plus the hardware, plus the device, right? So I guess uh, uh, just briefly capture the involvement of wearables. And uh, wearable was pretty much just a wearable, not connected. It have one function only, or for example, a watch. And then there were multiple functions in the device, but they're not connected. And then, uh, uh, in the last decades, we're starting to have devices that are uh, connected to the internet, uh, sometimes, not always. And then the smartphone come about and change everything. And now, uh, we have devices that are always connected, and we call that express, uh, implicitly connected as well. So, uh, it's different from an app for that, that is resided on your smartphone. Uh, usually, when you want to measure something on, a, on, on an app, uh, you need to bring up your phone, turn it on, run the app, and then do some measurement. Uh, devices like Fitbit or, or these kind of um, uh, uh, wearable devices, they're always connected, they're always collecting your data, they're always uh, reflecting your data in different terminals, be that on your smartphone, or be that uh, in a da database somewhere. Right? So uh, for the purpose of this discussion, I just want to loosely categorize a few areas of where Wearable IoT uh, is is uh, heading, and um, and what the popularity is uh, generating. Uh, frankly, uh, it's much bigger than this, but um, just trying to get some area that consumers probably will, will be willing to uh, pay money for devices in these categories. Um, health and well-being. We mentioned this band a few times, and. Uh, but it's not just measuring your body. Uh, we are seeing that uh, there are devices that, besides measuring your body signals, they are actually help improving your well-being, such as um, air purifiers. I've seen uh, personal air purifiers where you can wear, and uh, it's not just a mask, but actually purifies the air like a like a with a mask that uh, is very good for construction workers, for people who are working in dusty or polluted environment. As well as uh, as, um, as a technology that is um, available for athletes, or maybe just the regular uh, person on the streets biking in China, for example. So uh, those are the, the devices that are beyond uh, monitoring your your steps, or your weight, or your your heartbeat. So I, I loosely categorize them as health and well-being devices. Uh, entertainment. Uh, uh, I will try not to cover VR and AR right now. It's hot, but uh, it's from, yeah, as a, from a from a uh, entertainment point of view, uh, there are I'm seeing more and more educational and smart toys. Toys are not just designed for are not just designed for kids, but also designed for adults and the uh, and the um, and the kids here at heart. Right? Uh, living, needless to say, we're seeing a lot of um, smart home application uh, uh, devices. Uh, control devices uh, and more. 
uh, transportation, we just talked about auto, uh, automobile, and uh, also those that are de designed for drivers, uh, not just designed for the uh, um, self-driving vehicle. Uh, productivity, smartwatches, and whatnot. And lifestyle as well. So uh, I just want to try to get, give you a few examples of uh, successful startups that we've seen. Uh, they come, came out of uh, our lab, or our incubator last year, uh, in the last few years. Um, so in this category, health, health and well-being, there's a company called SOA. Uh, it's a wearable, it's a device that's, that you wear, but it detects the environment, uh, air quality, UV light, and all that. So, um, and it sends, and it, and it create, it reads that data in real time, and actually creates and connects to the net, and, uh, and send this data to how. And basically, you can imagine if a lot of people in the city or around you is wearing this device, you have you create a picture of how the uh, you know a regional picture of where the pollution is, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, where the uh, ultraviolet light is. And the application is has actually a lot of features that it would, for example, remind you that uh, your air quality in the room is not very good. You should open the window, things like that. So. Um, this is uh, uh, an example of that. Another, another um, product that I've seen, a company that we are um, uh, helping to grow is a uh, smart cup. A company that makes a smart cup. And um, it, 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 really, it has two, uh, a very no, very no, noble uh, uh, cost on the design. Uh, there are two reasons. Uh, most of us, most people do not drink enough water. So uh, the cup will remind you of, uh, you know, you need water, you better drink some water. And uh, lack of water uh, over a long term will actually do a lot of harm uh, to your body. Uh, so it measures, it, it works together with your, uh, your, uh, your, your uh, movement tracking device and, if, and understand your activity level and calculate how much water you should drink during the day and uh, keeps a record of it. And also its application has uh, some sort of uh, uh, benefits for you. If you are uh, satisfied with the drinking water requirement, it will create some virtual currency which you can buy something, use it to buy something through some e-commerce or e-shopping on your phone. And other um, advantage of that is its environment. Um, most of us uh, has, we drink a, a few bottles of water a day. But actually, bottled water is not good for the environment. I don't know if everybody knows that. It takes three or four bottles of water to produce one bottle of, uh, of drinking water. Um, like the machine that requires to, to manufacture the bottle, and then another bottle of water to wash the, machine, the bottle before you actually put drinking water in it. And by the time you have actual clean water that puts in a bottle and ship it to the market, um, you already use three bottles of, of the equivalent of three bottles of water uh, in order to produce one bottle of drinking water and shoot to the market. And uh, also, most uh, bottle of waters are actually lost. Most people buy a bottle of water, twist it open, drink a little bit, <laughs> and left it in either the conference table or where and left. And uh, most of the water are unfinished and waste. So, um, so. So, so this company actually is, uh, is uh, producing this cup uh, in order to encourage people not to use that many bottled water. So uh, lots of interesting and uh, different motivations. Um, uh, people are uh, tending to be offering solutions and consumers are also more aware of environment uh, and well-being. Uh, living. Uh, the examples I'm taking here is a company called uh, Rush. Uh, is a, a smart toothbrush uh, coming out from our lab. A uh, toothbrush is where well, everybody brushes the tooth, right? But for the kids, to encourage the kids to brush the tooth, this tooth, toothbrush actually connects an app to your iPhone, to your, to, your, to your smartphone. So the kids, you can see that on the uh, corner, uh, the, ch the child, when he brushes, it's as if he's, he's playing a game. So in front of the game, in front of the phone, it's, that's actually a game controlled by the movement of the toothbrush like killing the monster if it reaches a certain part of the mouth. And it turns a 
a, a, um, a, a, a behavior which most kids do not like. Most kids do not enjoy brushing their teeth. Usually, they need their mom to yell at them in order to brush their teeth, right? Now, they, it's a game. It's a game to them. So they, they love the game, and they love the toothbrush. And this innovation actually uh, um, had made the company won the, uh, the Best American Make Maker Award just a few months ago. You can actually see that on Facebook. Uh, they won a million dollar uh, cash award. It's not investment, cash award. So um, I met the founder, and uh, they were, they, they're racing for uh, fun for the second product right now, for the, the adult version. I, will, I can't wait to see what's the game design for adults, you know, looking at the phone and it's out of a mirror for the phone uh, and brush your teeth. So it is fun. There's a lot of um, innovations that are coming out that is really close to life. So I encourage when you start thinking about the product, think from your daily life and uh, how you can put the elements of fun. The element of fun is really important, right? Transport, I, I mentioned this, but I uh, really like to show this, um, this, this um, company that called OS Vehicle. Uh, they make modular car. Uh, it's, uh, it's the first open source hardware vehicle, electric vehicle um, uh, in the world. So uh, you can see, as you can see, this is the basic frame of the car. But in less than a day of work, you could actually compose and build your own car. So. Uh, it really, really revolutionized uh, the car industry. Basically, if you, you can buy a kit and build your car at your garage. In Hong Kong, that would be a little, bit, little difficult, but in Hong Kong, I, I, I think that meant in the underground parking lot. But um, again, this is completely uh, disrupt the traditional car, uh, the thinking of the car industry. I personally think that it, it even disrupts Tesla as well. Smart Toy Entertainment. Uh, here's a company called uh, Metron Force, uh, based in San Francisco. In fact, the founder, I know him as a friend, he's uh, from Hong Kong. And um, it's a wristband. What's uh, about this wristband is that when he loves, he's, um, he's a Star Wars fan. I mean, he loves Star Wars stuff. I do. You know, Star Wars has been many years. So, so he been, he's inspired by the movement of the sun of Star Wars, right? You want to grab something, just move your hand, and that object will fly across the room or whatever. And uh, in fact, in Hong Kong, we are more familiar with this kind of thing from from the martial art movies. Actually, it doesn't need Star Wars. <laughs> So he, he wants to make that happen. So what happened is that he created this uh, wristband that detects the movement of his hand and controls objects. This object, with a, this object slightly modified, it could be a toy, it could be a robot, it could be a car, a radio controlled car, it could be a flying drone. So he can control up to, I think, multiple objects at the same time by some learning on movement of the, of the hand. It's a fun toy. I mean, I would love to get a hold of one of these. So um, again, all this will have a, have a site that is linked already. I, I only have, you know, uh, the last few slides, but actually there are more very interesting IoT devices, wearable IoT devices coming uh, our way. Uh, one of the, the um, well, the company that uh, you know, lab that is working on is a smart T-shirt. I mean, I'm sure you heard of smart T-shirts, but uh, this smart T-shirt is really revolutionary. It builds the uh, basically it builds the circuit board into the yard and into the, the fabric itself. That is washable, but you can install sensors onto the uh, clothes, and um, based on that, you can create a lot of applications. And the current applications that they're building is that they have heat sensors that sense your body temperature and generate, wherever you feel cold, they generate heat. Very low, slight amount of heat that makes you feel warm. It turned out that I just learned something recently. I didn't know that our body nerve system actually is, it, it detects heat, it detects temperature only in certain part of our body. So if we can keep that small part of the body, or that part of the body who senses temperature warm, 
your computers and your computers and your more. So, um, so wow. So when I first found out this is this really lifestyle. This is really living. Um, you can make that a, a, a fashionable, you know, T-shirt is also a product that could uh, can be used from a six-year-old to a sixty-year-old or eighty-year-old, right? So um, fascinating. It's interesting. So so wearable devices are actually a lot more than wristbands and smartwatches now. Uh, needless to say, Google Glass and, and things like that. So having these examples. Talking about all this example and this uh, product set are coming to us, um, and and I was and when learned that I was supposed to talk about wearable IoT trends, I really have a difficult times of identifying what are the trends. I mean, it seems that everywhere there are opportunities, and um, it's really hard to identify that which trend is stronger than the other. You know, so uh, so so I would say. Uh, Trends are happening everywhere in different verticals. So uh, these uh, these verticals, uh, which I summarize in um, in what's happening today from the U.S. market and also from the Asia and China market uh, perspective. Uh, Smart city is a big initiative that is going on. Uh, if wearable is not part of the big infrastructure type of IoT. But there will be a lot of opportunity that is we build devices, wearable devices based on uh, a smart city type of uh, 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 frame of thought. Uh, automo automobile, so we talk about that. Uh, healthcare and insurance, we talk about that. Monitoring person's uh, 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 body signal. And, uh, and with the advancement of uh, sensor technology, this monitoring could be, this measurement could be more and more uh, accurate and creating better and better results. And these results can actually apply to medical, the hospitals to consume, and also just uh, insurance companies to, to make their um, estimations and build their uh, risk analysis and things like that. So uh, actually insurance industry is a big driver for this kind of uh, devices. Uh, industry, uh, manufacturing, I IoT, there's a lot of talk about robotic, a lot of talk about, um, you know, um, uh, IoT type of machinery who, who uh, help the industry into, in, in, uh, in a lot more than just manufacturing. So uh, I'm not an expert in, in, in manufacturing, so I won't, speak, I won't speak too much about that. FinTech, Hong Kong is a big place for FinTech, right? So um, it's, a, it's emerging technology. So we also think that is uh, is uh, an area where a wearable IoT devices would have would take when they would be needed. But there was a lot of um, innovation opportunity on that too. Down there, in the infrastructure side, we would have platforms and uh, networks and. Um, as Williams just presented in the uh, um, um, from the uh, Microsoft perspective, there'll be a lot of uh, enabling and support uh, uh, background technologies to support that. One of the interesting phenomena is um, the U.S. market. Um, we've noticed that a lot of wearable wearable products will take take their will receive their early adopters early adoption in the U.S. market. It seems that. The U.S. market is uh, is a, a is a is a market that uh, will prove or will test or the acceptance of uh, IoT device or new IoT devices, new wearable devices, from the consumer's perspective. So, seeing that, and also we're here in Hong Kong, we're next to Shenzhen, and as you know, Shenzhen is also the uh, sort of the hardware uh, Silicon Valley of the world. Uh, most electronic goods. I say most, maybe not all, but almost all <laughs> electronic devices uh, were in some some way involved in Shenzhen's uh, production chain, right? So um, combining the two, the market we could um, take advantage of both places and help startups and your new products that could find um, resources here in Shenzhen 
and the market in the U.S. for the first launch, and, and um, that would be a perfect combination. That's how I, how we see the uh, that's why we're in Hong Kong in the first place, and that's how we see um, the relationship between Hong Kong and and the U.S. Lastly, this is this slide is just meant to be a joke, okay? <laughs> but I throw it out as a question, you know. When we were thinking of the product, when we were thinking of the device, I was challenged by a, um, a, a friend in his presentation. I just took a slide. So um, when we think of the product, which direction are we thinking? Actually, we are living in this century. We always are thinking our ideas are always based on some existing product, right? So if we have a carriage, which direction will we think to develop? Will we build a better carriage, a luxury carriage? A diamond, you know, one that with diamonds and gold, but still a carriage. Um, or we see that as a transportation, and we think along the way that if we put new technology and putting, you know, increasing the speed, you know, increasing horsepower, and eventually replace the horses by by a new technology, we have a car or a fast car, and maybe moving beyond that too. So I just want to conclude the presentation by this slide. And um, somehow, I know that it does, there's no right or wrong. Uh, but it, it's kind of like, if you're thinking of one way of improve, improving an, exi an existing product or an existing category of product, uh, another alternative is to think bigger, you know? Think uh, from a technology or maybe a different way that create a brand new category and some breakthrough as well. So um, just leave it for uh, some thought. Thank you.